Powerful Cyclone Mocha continuing towards the coast of Myanmar on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for May 13th. Mocha, of course, the main feature right now, and obviously to, obvious to see why. It is a Category 3, a powerful storm right now with estimated winds of 120 miles per hour, and that's plunged us into Code Red. The storm does have the potential to be a catastrophic impact for the coast of Myanmar, which obviously has its own troubles right now, with a lot of people displaced there. 19 days until Atlantic hurricane season. There's a big tornado threat going on right now and lots of severe thunderstorms as well over the United States, but out at sea there's very little going on, but quite a few thunderstorms blowing up over Cuba. Along with Mocha, we have a 70% chance now for that system in the South Indian Ocean, now tagged Invest 92S. That is likely to become a tropical cyclone and could get towards a stronger side of things, category 1 or 2 on the Zephyr Simpson scale, however the good news is it won't be affecting any land areas. The same can't be said for Cyclone Mocha though, it is uh, stalling in intensity right now uh, due to possibly dry air or wind shear, but we do expect that it will start intensifying again and could get to category 4 before it reaches land tomorrow night. And this is what this uh, Southern Pacific system is looking like right now as well. We marked it in the wrong place on last night's bulletin, if you noticed. But there it is right now over French Polynesia. 20% chance in the next five days for this system that's slowly developing. Satellite imagery around the world looks like this. The last 24 hours, you can see those red areas, particularly underneath Cyclone Mocha. Extreme rain rates underneath that in those red areas, and that will eventually transfer to land once the central core of the storm reaches it, but that's still over 24 hours away. A quick look there at this South Pacific system, you can see it's still got a way to go before we call it anything that's nameable, uh, but that's just a little look at it there. And then you can see the Eastern Indian Ocean, two systems either side of the equator. Mocha well established, that invest not so, but getting itself together a little bit better there. And we'll zoom in on that just for the f uh, beginning here. And you can see it's a very elongated system north to south with banding, a little bit um, peripheral band there on the southwestern side but the system itself is has got a long way to go before it gets itself into a tropical cyclone with respect though the models are only expecting it to form towards the end of the period here's cyclone mocha which looked really good earlier on today especially considering this is from the himawari satellite um, in truth be told the eye was much clearer earlier on today than this imagery shows however it has collapsed somewhat in the last few hours you can see there the western side really looking flaky and the eye nowhere to be seen on the satellite imagery trust me it's still there but it might have some work to do to get it back on the visible satellite imagery there from the top down view sea surface temperatures in the eastern pacific still look very grand especially off the coast of mexico over 30 degrees celsius over large areas so when that season gets going it could be a busy start the Atlantic, really warm waters around Cuba and up the Gulf Stream now, extending off the east coast of Florida, pushing 28 degrees Celsius. Indian Ocean, very warm as you can see, as we know, still extremely warm temperatures, 32 degrees roughly, near where Cyclone Mocha is right now. It will only fall slightly before it makes landfall. Southwest Indian Ocean is getting much cooler there once again. Um, that system, when it does form, if it does, uh, will only have around 27 degrees Celsius waters to deal with uh, so it is a little bit on the chilly side and the Australian region looks like this really breaking up now in the far eastern Indian Ocean um, with only a few patches of 29 degrees Celsius waters left and the cool pool from the south uh, starting to overtake and in the South Pacific as well you can see here over French Polynesia those temperatures 
are still looking fairly decent as a matter of fact for that potential system. Western Pacific still extremely warm sea surface temperatures and building, particularly in the Philippine Sea. Look at that now, 31, maybe pushing 32 degrees near Palau and towards the Philippine Islands. A little bit above average over there, but it is quite a bit above average now where Cyclone Mocha is in the Bay of Bengal, so that is certainly a point of concern, obviously, given that this storm has already taken advantage of its conditions so far. Now, the Eastern Pacific El Nino event looks to be revving up a lot there as well. That cool pool in between North America and Hawaii is starting to disappear slowly but surely, and the Atlantic, very warm compared to average as well. This is what the oceanic heat content looks like, and you can see the South Pacific, very high amounts over large parts still but those are quite low latitude. Western Pacific, Philippine Sea, really getting heavy in those numbers now as well. And the Eastern Pacific also is catching up just a little bit with some decent amounts in there too. Much better than what it was last year, as I keep saying on this section. So the computer models, the GFS over the next five days looks like this, an extremely powerful storm that makes landfall near the border between Myanmar and Bangladesh. That's pretty much what the forecast has been saying all along as we've been watching this storm. Uh, we know of the uh, potential for humanitarian issues in these areas. Lots of people displaced and out in the open in the Cox's Bazaar region down towards the uh, northwestern part of Myanmar with over 1.8 million displaced across the country of Myanmar right now. Powerful landfall, strong winds, heavy rainfall of up to 300 or 400 millimeters and uh, a storm surge of over 10 feet possible. Now here's this other system, 92S in the southern Indian Ocean, there it is again, getting rather strong, probably category 2 equivalent there in those end frames towards that five day period. As I said, it does take its time to get itself formed, around two days from now the GFS thinks it will be and that's a little bit optimistic, other models have it a little bit slower. And here's this system in the south Pacific, it's messy but there is that little chance there that that rotation could end up becoming either a tropical or subtropical cyclone. Uh, whether it gets named or not would be a huge question mark, probably not. Uh, but will it be classifiable as a cyclone, a nameable storm? Uh, we'll see. Uh, but low chances at the moment, only hovering at around 20%. Um, and now looking at the rainfall expectations here for the Bay of Bengal region and you can see quite clearly even on this swathe where the storm makes landfall and the rain really spreads itself out inland over the next seven days there you can see some pretty decent rainfall amounts uh, some of it not straight away some of that happening a little bit later on whether that's associated with the storm completely or not I'm not sure but up to 300 millimeters of rainfall still expected near the landfall zone south of Cox's Bazaar northwest of Sitway and you can see inland quite high amounts there as well getting up towards 8 inches quite regularly in a few of those areas even into the easternmost provinces of India and Bangladesh up to 8 inches that's 200 millimeters or possibly higher even well up towards the northeast there getting up to four or five inches over 100 millimeters and in the southeastern part of Myanmar in the next seven days as well we could be looking at 100 millimeters of rainfall there too in the longer range, day 5 through 10, the Western Pacific certainly has uh, a trick up its sleeve according to the GFS. It's been saying this for a long time. It is still long range, too long to be ver have any kind of certainty on it. But there it is, a typhoon that forms right at the end of that 10 day period on the GFS. Uh, going through that alley in the Philippine Sea. Um, whether that becomes anything substantial or not, big question mark. Uh, but this time of year it can start up like that we can get strong typhoons what becomes of this Indian Ocean cyclone then uh, the model has changed this time earlier it had it moving further southeast and moving on this time it's mainly due east and it gets caught there looks like by a ridge probably um, and there it is stalling again towards the end of that 10 day period but still alive although we're not showing it in the silly range because it dies off pretty quickly after that and then scoots off towards the west and continues going in that direction 
you can take a look at the Force 13 merch store, scan the barcode and take a look at all of our items on there. That's a sign that all the serious stuff is done. We've got some new products on the way and one or two that have appeared, if see if you can find them. And are still waiting for a Hone t-shirt. That certainly hasn't left the building yet. I think it's got quite a bit of time before it becomes obsolete. Silly range then is this typhoon that forms on the GFS day 10 through 16 this is and there it is getting really powerful as we saw in quite a few model runs in the last few days from the GFS long range has been consistently making this a powerful typhoon well into the category 4 range there towards the end of that run and scooting off towards the north and then the northeast gradually uh, but that is very very far out and I would not put any faith into that thing forming yet. Doesn't mean you can't talk about it though, you can talk about anything in the wide world of tropics and in a general weather scene on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13. We have room for general chat there as well with over 3,000 weather watchers from around the world. On this day, a curious storm, a system that was classified as a Category 1, although it doesn't really look like on that satellite image, and it was in the Bay of Bengal, Cyclone 1B, which briefly peaked at 75 miles per hour on this day in 2003. It was uh, hovering around the Bay of Bengal region there. It was uh, quite undecided for a while, but it eventually turned northeastwards and did impact, I think, southern Myanmar, if I remember correctly, uh, as a weaker tropical storm but that was the highlight on this day on May 13th well then the first name on the Atlantic naming list this year is Arlene the Eastern Pacific Adrian and in the Central Pacific we are still waiting for Hone Obviously, Mocha has made a menace of itself so far, the 17th storm to form around the world. It's caused Code Red here at Force 13 Operations. The next name in the Western Pacific is Moa, and in the North Indian Ocean, once we're done with Mocha, the next name is Bipajoy. In the Southern Hemisphere, could we see that next name storm? Well, if we do, it is going to be called Fabienne in the Southwest Indian Ocean, Jasper in the Australian region, and Lola in the South Pacific. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night, as long as we're not doing live coverage.